Bring in Tony Dwyer's chief market strategist at Canaccord Genuity to talk about his outlook for the markets. And Tony, I know that coming into today, you were still a little bit cautious, uh, especially after we'd seen a big run for the S&P this year. How are you thinking about the markets right now? Yeah, and thanks for having me. It, it doesn't really change it. So when you look at some of the data, see, our, we're, I think we're a little bit different than most of the folks that will come on and talk to you is that, you know, we believe that the soft landing scenario is not a great scenario. It's sort of like if you think about a pendulum and, and you're predicting that at some point the pendulum is going to hit right at the bottom exact point, you're 100% going to be right, and then it's going to continue swinging. So the idea is that the Fed can raise rates in a historic way. Never before have they raised rates the way they have into a generationally levered system and then have it perfectly match out with declining inflation and then it stays there. So I think just at, at this point, given the run that we've had and given the likelihood of, we do have, it's, it's better than expected, I think, for, across the board in terms of the economic data, but it's still weakening. So we're in this situation where we're in the sweet spot and that's been reflected in the stock market. And now it's just, I think, time to you know, not bet against it. You don't need to get really negative and bet against it. I think we just wait for a pullback um, before we try to bet with it. Maybe you can walk us through at least some of the numbers you're thinking about. So for the broader S&P 500, and I know a lot of the lift has come uh, through a, a handful of technology stocks this year, but the benchmark is up about 16% for 2023. We're currently sitting around 44.67. So when you talk about pullbacks or ultimate expectations for performance through the end of the year, what kind of numbers are you thinking about? You could get a five to 10% pullback, but John, as you know, you know, we've been doing this a while, you and I, <laughs> it is much more volatile and violent than I've ever seen it. Like mm. just for example, yesterday afternoon in the last hour and a half of trading or so, the S&P was uh, down 35 S&P points. Pretty, that's a pretty good hit. Then it was up uh, or basically unchanged and then it closed down 31 S&P points. So trying to think exactly and, and pretend that I'm gonna be good enough to pick what the correction's gonna be. And ultimately that's why I'm saying, I, I don't think you need to necessarily bet against it. Um, but we're in a situation where in the, the, we call it the broader S&P 500. When I got into the business, there was this transition happening in, 19, in the late 1980s away from the Dow Jones Industrial Average because it was too concentrated. Right now, the S&P 500, the top 10 stocks, are 32.4% of the S&P 500. Now, that's concentrated. And I think that's the frustration that investors have is they, they go to their financial advisor, they go to me, and they say, God, you know, the market's up 17%. How come you're only up X? And the answer is because it's actually inappropriate for most people to take that kind of concentration risk, which is what the S&P 500 is. So we would rather look at an equal weighted S&P, a value versus S&P, or even small mid cap versus S&P.